question is, uh, what, what is this concept of emergence that is very important in biology, clearly, uh, and very important in all of the human sciences, uh, but also very important in physics? Uh, the entire theory of complex systems is, in a sense, a theory of, of what we mean by this notion of emergence. And there are many, many definitions out there in the, in the scientific literature and also in the philosophical literature. And many of them have to do with uh, what can be explained by what. And emergent phenomena are uh, often defined as phenomena at one level of description that can't be predicted from phenomena at a different level of description. So, uh, to take a classic example, we think of liquidity as an emergent property of the chemistry of water. <laughs> um, so if you have a bunch of water molecules and the temperature and pressure are right, they will act like a liquid. <laughs> well, what does it mean to act like a liquid? Uh, it's something that can only, that's a question that can only be asked at a particular scale. Uh, you have to have enough water around for the, the, the molecules to act collectively in order to see liquidity as a, as a phenomenon. So we think of water molecules, we're thinking at a very small scale, and when we're acting, asking questions about liquidity or measuring liquidity, measuring properties like viscosity, for example, we have to measure those at a, at a larger scale and liquidity can only be defined at this larger scale. So it's natural to ask the question, can we look at this lower scale at molecular behavior and predict uh, from first principles this, all of this behavior we would see up here? You know, would we expect from the molecular structure of water that it would display uh, if you had enough of these molecular structures around, properties like viscosity. And that's an extremely hard question to answer. And in virtually every case, we have no idea how to do the computations that would be necessary to predict the large-scale behavior of molecular systems from only the small-scale behavior of molecules. Similarly, it's, it's very difficult to predict the, the chemical properties of elements from just knowledge of quantum theory, for example. You know, we can, we can predict something about ionization. Uh, we can predict something about chemical bonding. But as molecules start to get large, <laughs> then it becomes very difficult to predict how they're going to behave. They become big three-dimensional structures that move around according to very complex dynamics that uh, in practice can't be predicted just from knowledge of how the individual atoms would behave. So we can't start with atomic physics and predict the behavior of big proteins. <laughs> Um, because it's at, a, it's at a larger scale and you're talking about many, many, many things working together and, um, in effect, exchanging information uh, with each other in order to define some collective behavior pattern. So here, those are some examples. What do we really mean then by emergence? Uh, we always mean a transition between scales uh, spatial scales in particular, um, in which we can define behavior at one scale and ask what does behavior at this scale tell us about behavior at other scales? And we can ask the question in, in a sense in either direction. What does the large scale behavior tell us about the small scale? <laughs> and what does the small scale behavior tell us about the large scale, and both of those questions turn out to be very hard. Uh, so we're, f we're faced with defining behavior at multiple scales, <laughs> and um, 
being unable, typically, <laughs> to construct a predictive story between the scales. So if we acknowledge that we can't predict behavior between scales, we can then ask, to what extent does my knowledge of the small-scale behavior allow me to explain or understand the large scale? And um, once again, we're faced with this problem of complexity at larger scales. And, uh, and, and, and unexpected behavior at small scales as its complement. So even, even when we relax the requirement from predictability to, to explainability or understandability, uh, we're faced with this issue that uh, we don't have the tools to explain behavior at large scales based on behavior at small scales. And conversely, although this typically isn't called emergence, uh, we don't have the tools to explain small-scale behavior in terms of large-scale behavior. Uh, a very good model of this is actually computer science. If you uh, build a computer and plug it in and turn it on, uh, then it exhibits lots of behavior. And you can think of that behavior at the level of electronic circuits and current flowing through wires and, and transistors uh, passing current or not passing current. Or you can think of that behavior at a very large scale of uh, presenting you, the user, with a word processing program or a video editing program. And um, you can't start with the idea of a video editing program and predict what's happening in the wires. And in fact, your video editing program may run on many different computers, which at the structure of the wires are completely different. <laughs> Similarly, if you start with the behavior at the wires, you can't predict what algorithm is being uh, run, <laughs> what program is being run. And the same behavior of the wires could be interpreted as running several different programs. And in fact, what operating systems do is allow you, the user of the computer, to interpret its behavior as something that's useful to you. Uh, what programming languages do is allow you to interpret the behavior of one set of symbols as the behavior of another set of symbols. And these are interpretation processes that we construct <laughs> as technologies. But when we're faced with nature, we don't have those interpretation tools. They're not given to us. Uh, we have to try to dream them up uh, by some creative process. And that's, that's what scientific theorizing is, is uh, the process of trying to come up with an interpretation of one kind of behavior in terms of another kind of behavior that allows us to understand the one in terms of what we know about the other. And it's a very incomplete process. So um, we can think of the entire world as, as an emergent phenomenon uh, that we have to explain at as many different levels of description as we can and always bearing in mind that uh, we may not know how to connect the description at one level of, of description in one language to a description in another language at another level of description. So that's, that's sort of just how science works. <laughs> um.